CNN has released shocking audio of secret communications between Sonia Massey's killer and his superior. Suspect information or vehicle information, that's the stuff when you start working on to help them out. Just confirm self-inflicted. Two on out. Happy County's update. I didn't. Self-inflicted. Do you understand what I am saying? Yes, I do, sir. And I've had this conversation with you before. If we can't trust what you say and what you see, we can't have you in our uniform. There was no way I was going to start the show with any other topic than the one I'm about to broach because I think it's important. My first topic today is a difficult one, to say the least. Coming out of the state of Illinois, yesterday, footage was released of an officer-involved incident that resulted in the death of a Springfield, Illinois woman. And it once again has many in our nation absolutely positively infuriated. We are not going to show the video here. If you have not seen it, trust me when I tell you, it is graphic and incredibly disturbing. The Illinois State Police have released body cam footage that's sparked nationwide outrage, showing a police officer shoot a black woman inside her own home. It all started when Sonia Massey called the police, worried about a possible prowler outside. The video shows two officers entering her home to inform her that they didn't find anything suspicious. But what happened next is nothing short of tragic. Massey, tending to a pot of boiling water on her stove, unknowingly stepped into a nightmare. Around 12.50 a.m., two Sangamon County Sheriff's deputies arrived at Massey's home to investigate. The footage shows the officers checking the area before knocking on Massey's door. When they speak with her, it's clear she's struggling to answer some of their questions. Doing all right mentally? Yes. Sir? My medicine. All right. Okay. All right. That's not your black car, though. The SUV? Whose is it? You don't know? Someone just parked it in your driveway? Mm -hmm. They brought it to my driveway. And just left it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's run that. Yeah. 19, I got a 20 for you. David Mary, 435560. Massey's family later confirmed she had been diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. According to court documents, she appeared calm, possibly unwell and non-aggressive in the video. One deputy continued searching outside while Deputy Sean P. Grayson entered the house, followed by the other officer. The footage captures the tense exchange between Massey and the officers as they talk inside her home. Well, let's get your ID first and then... One task at a time here. Okay. Here, grab your ID for me. Uh-huh. Okay. Your ID. One task at a time. So let's do an ID. And then you can dig around for your uh, paperwork. I don't know where my ID is. You, you have that stack right there, maybe? Okay. Just check on her. Sure. We don't need a fire while we're here. Right. When they notice the boiling pot on the stove, Massey gets up to turn off the heat. That's when everything went horribly wrong. Bring you miss now. We got a head into the female. Head into the female. Ten seventy eight. I was on, I was on. I'm gonna go get my kit. No, if you had sh it's your ass, you're done. You can go get it, but that's a head shot. <clears throat> God damn it. God. Yeah, I'm not saying it's boring all out of his head. And look, it came right to our feet, too. God damn it. God damn it. You good? I'm good. You good? Yeah, I'm good. Let her just... God. Is that what you do, man? Right. 
You good? Alright. Well, I mean, you know, what else do we do? I'm not taking hot boiling water to fuck and it already reached us. <laughs> They got a 52 in route? Yeah, 1078. Yeah, you can still breathe, but you're losing a lot of blood from the head. I'll go get my meds. Go, go get, yeah. Just 26 minutes after the sh at 1.47 a.m., Massey was rushed to St. John's Hospital, where she was pronounced dead. Grayson, a 30-year-old white officer, had a history of short stints in various police departments and sheriff's offices in central Illinois, changing jobs six times since 2020. He has a history of insubordination. The Springfield mother was shot to death by a now-fired sheriff's deputy after she called 911 for help. Meanwhile, our Dave Savini has uncovered new details about that officer's past. And Dave, there are serious questions about why he was hired multiple times. Erica and Joe, CBS News has uncovered notes from one of Grayson's former police chiefs during a reference check for his next police job. It was a warning of the trouble Grayson had already caused, and it doesn't stop there. Another supervisor said he failed to obey orders, especially during the high-speed chase you're about to see. The red flags and warning signs were there prior to Deputy Grayson firing those fatal shots into Sonia Massey. I'm trying to get help. A woman home alone who called police for help over a possible intruder, but instead ended up with Deputy Sean Grayson. Doing what? Grayson, who's now charged with her murder, had a troubled career that began with a stint in the Army, a discharge for misconduct, then followed by more accusations of misconduct. We checked your front yard. During his time in law enforcement, described as having trouble obeying orders. We're at the end of Second Street. She's taking it out right. Like with what happened here at his fifth police job when he refused an order by a superior at the Logan County Sheriff's Department to terminate a high-speed chase over a traffic infraction. His speed at times reaching 110 miles per hour. Are you pursuing? I'm about to terminate. She's flying up 121 right now. But Grayson didn't stop. He did, however, turn off his lights and siren, but kept going anyways until he hit a deer. Well, I'll definitely be terminated because a buck just smacked the side of my driver's side door. Did you violate a direct order yes. from a supervisor about termination? Yes, I did. After the shooting, Grayson pleaded not guilty to first degree murder, but was fired by the Sangamon County Sheriff's Office, which stated, it is clear that the deputy did not act as trained or in accordance with our standards. What went on behind the scenes was incredibly suspicious. I'm calling you on your integrity. How does that make you feel? I'm learning from it. Are you angry with me for it? No. I don't. Do you understand it? Yes. I, I don't get angry with, with this because, one, I have no experience. Before I came here, I had no experience. Two, I wasn't allowed to do this right here. I was not allowed to review my videos. This is termination. I'm getting goosebumps. This is extremely concerning. Everybody likes you. I gotta be able to trust you. Was this a purposefully done lie? No. I I full honestly, I still believed I was on North Madison until you just pulled up Google Maps and showed me in the daytime. <clears throat> this is going to get deeper because you're going to have a hard time answering some questions here real quick. Okay. Defending the decision to hire the officer who shot the Hey, good morning, Wait, Yeah, this is the first time we're hearing in detail from the sheriff who, as you said, is defending his decision to hire Sean Depp, sh the sheriff, to hire the deputy, uh, to hire the deputy who, uh, Sean Grayson, sorry, his name escaped me. Now, he defends that hiring and he calls Grayson a rogue officer. There was nothing in his background that would disqualify him from being a police officer in Illinois. In fact, uh, he'd been hired by five other agencies, 
and he'd been certified by the state of Illinois six different times to be a police officer. Insisting that his employment history was not a red flag. In fact, he says it was a plus that Grayson worked at so many agencies in such a short period of time. Campbell releasing Grayson's personnel records, showing two of those past employers, said he did not demonstrate good officer safety skills and needed more training. There was nothing reported to us that would, would, would concern us. There was no use of force complaints and things like that that would be something that we would be very concerned about. The records also show Grayson never informed him of past misconduct, including a time he disobeyed a command during a high-speed chase. When asked about Grayson's two DUIs, Campbell dismissing the arrests. He did nothing in his employment at these agencies that would have uh, raised another flag for people to look at. I don't know what they knew, so we were not able to conduct an internal investigation to, find, to answer those questions uh, because Grayson refused to answer questions there. However, it's worth noting that it's rare for officers to be prosecuted and convicted in such cases. There was a lot of outrage when it came to the reaction to Sonia's murder. Sonia's own son was heartbroken and had this to say. How did you find out that a deputy had shot your mother? I found out from my cousin telling me. What do you want to see done now? I want him to get for full term highest amount of years he can get until death. Do you think Sonia would still be alive if she had not been black? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he would have definitely been more cautious. He wouldn't have did that, I don't think. No, he wouldn't have did it at all. We're going to get justice for sure, I know. We are for sure, I'm positive. I'm positive. The sheriff's deputy who shot and killed Sonia Massey claims he feared she was going to throw a pot of boiling water on him. But based on the horrifying police body cam, her family and their attorney weren't buying it. I can't explain this. It's, it's just flabbergasting. It's crazy. I've never seen anything like this. And if we pass the George Floyd Policing Act, if this is a catalyst to pass our John Lewis voting rights bill, this is the catalyst to get uh, Kamala Harris as our next president. It won't bring my baby back, but it can keep anybody else from joining this club. Donald Trump was asked if someone like Sean Grayson deserved immunity, and he had something extremely shocking to say. Sonia Massey, uh, someone from Illinois, an unarmed black woman, was the other day in her home um, by a deputy sheriff. The deputy has since been charged with her. You've said police would get immunity for prosecution if you win. Why should someone like that officer have immunity, in your opinion? Immunity? Uh, immunity. I, I don't know the exact case, but I saw something, and it didn't look, well, it didn't look good to me. It didn't look good to me. Uh, are you talking with the water? Right? Yeah, well, police. I mean, police unions are not backing this person okay, either. Okay. But again, why gonna, would. They're going to be tra charging the officer. I guess they're charging the officer. So why should he receive immunity? Well, he might not. I mean, it depends. It depends on what uh, happens. I'm talking about people that are much different cases than that. We need people to protect ourselves. And by the way, in Chicago, as an example, last, a few weeks ago, July 4th weekend, they had 117 shootings and 17 deaths. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. We need to have our police officers have the respect and dignity back. In this particular case, I saw something that didn't look good to me. I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. So uh, can you get a little more specific back to the immunity question? Who would make those those Well, right now, for the most part, for the most part, uh, People are protected by their unions, by their police unions, or by their police departments. But I'm saying if, if I felt or if, if a group of people would feel that somebody was being unfairly prosecuted because the person did a good job maybe with crime or made a mistake, an innocent mistake, there's a big difference between being a bad person and making an innocent mistake. But if somebody made an innocent mistake, I would want to help that person. In the wake of the criticism directed at him, the sheriff of Illinois County eventually decided it was better for him to step down. I will not risk the community that I swore to protect 
He went on to say the tragic death of Sangha Massey has been a heartbreaking event for our community. The one person truly responsible for this act is in jail, and I truly believe justice will be served through the legal process. Campbell also says he has even had threats to his own life related to the case. In the jail video, Grayson talks about his case. That's what the state's attorney agreed, or that's what the state's attorney made the charges. So, so this is for my own safety to put me in custody. So. Damn. Grayson has pleaded not guilty. In the video, he says he expects a short time behind bars. Yeah, well, this whole new city yet. Mm -hmm. That's why hopefully I'll be out tomorrow. He was referring to his initial court appearance on July 18th. Grayson's lawyers argue the Menard County Jail is unable to treat Grayson's medical needs, which include having colon cancer. In court Friday, a judge ruled he will remain behind bars. Grayson's personal life also raised red flags. In June 2015, his wife, Alexia Grayson, now Alexia K. Pitchford, filed for divorce in the circuit court of Macoupin County. Pitchford cited extreme and repeated acts of mental cruelty without cause or provocation as the reason for seeking the divorce. Ever since the reveal of his past has happened, New theories have come out about her murder. Information is starting to leak out in the cracks of this Sonia Massey story, huh? Information is starting to leak out in the cracks of this Sonia Massey story. So I've been in these streets and I've been trying to do my homework. I've been Googling and everything. So I looked up who Sean Grayson's wife was because she kept coming up a lot. Her name is I Isabel Butter Butterfield. Yeah, yeah, did y'all look her up? Isabel Butterfield, daddy, guess who he is? Isabel Butterfield's daddy is Scott Butterfield, huh? Scott Butterfield is the, used to be a chief deputy of, of the sheriff's department. Guess where Sean work at, huh? Did you get Sean a job? Inquiring minds want to know. Now, that's not the only crazy thing. I looked up Isabel Butterfield and Sean Grayson, and guess what I found? They just got married October the 19th, 2024. Why? Because this is their registry list. I also found their target registry list, and... I ain't gonna lie, something a little fishy here. You mean to tell me that you're gonna pay $50 for a set of Harrington flatware, but you're gonna pay $32.99 only for a damn toaster? And why the hell you got two cake mixing bowls on your damn registry? Who you think you is, a goddamn uh, Anita Baker? The theory becomes more intriguing as Smachavelli continues to pull back the curtain on this connection. We also did a little bit more digging and found out where Isabel Butterfield works. And y'all ain't gonna believe this. I started doing some digging and I realized y'all said that um, uh, Sonya had on a hospital bracelet. I looked up the closest place where she could have got medical care to her house, an eight minute drive away. And guess where we ended up at? Capital Community Health Center. And guess who worked there? Isabel Butterfield. Now the reason this got me thinking is because I remember when this cop first walked up to the door he said, You feeling all right mentally? Yes. Sir? My medicine. All right. Why would he ask her that just out the clear blue? And another thing that's kind of getting me, getting me up here in the mind, and this is just me now. This is nowhere else in TikTok, but I just want y'all to listen and hear me out. I'm thinking from the perspective of calling the, calling the police. If I called the police, why wouldn't I be dressed already? Now, I know y'all don't know where I'm going with this. Could it be that something happened allegedly between um, uh, Isabel Butterfield and Sonya Massey at that place and she left and went home because she didn't even take the, the, the bracelet off. When she left and went home, could it possibly be that the, the police actually, uh, the, especially Sean Grayson, who I'm talking about, actually caused the situation in the backyard and then they took the call, which is why she didn't even have a chance to get clothes on? Because if I heard something in the driveway, wouldn't you automatically get dressed and at least try to be prepared just in case they try to come in the house? Wait a minute now. Y'all heard it here first. Something fishy is going on. All I'm saying is that Springfield, Illinois police need to look up the average call time, the average response time um, in the area, and then look up the response time of how fast Sean Grayson got there, okay? So we gonna stay, we gonna stay abreast of this, but this is just a theory. This is just a theory. We go, we gonna update y'all as it go, but it seemed fishy to me that she didn't have clothes on and something was going on outside her house. Was it, was it, was it soon as she, as soon as y'all got the call, y'all took it because y'all were in the area? You gonna find out now. 
I'm just a messenger. At her funeral, James Wilburn, Massey's father, spoke from the heart, saying, no doubt in my mind that my baby is resting in the arms of Jesus right now. A deputy had and that was just unbelievable. I couldn't, I couldn't understand. Why, why would a deputy kill my child? What punishment do you think Sean Grayson deserves? Let us know in the comments below.